Dublin Core is intended to be a generic metadata schema, right? The metadata core for the web, it's intended to be able to describe literally anything. Consequently, it doesn't describe any specific thing perfectly. So there is a need to be able to extend Dublin Core. And this is one of the overarching goals of Dublin Core that we discussed earlier, extensibility. So groups over the years that are responsible for the creation of Dublin Core have created mechanisms to allow Dublin Core to be expanded or what's called qualified. And there are two ways to qualify Dublin Core. The first is by refining elements. That is to say, by creating subcategories of elements. And the second way is by specifying which controlled vocabulary, which encoding scheme, you're using. So we'll talk about element refinement first. Right, so let's say that in describing your resource, you have three different kinds of date. You have the date your resource was created, dates on which it was modified, and how long your resource is valid before it becomes obsolete. Right? So those three types of dates you might call created, modified, and valid. If we're creating meta tags in HTML, those three categories would simply become refinements of the dc.date element, right? So you would have dc.date.created, dc.date.modified, right? Your refinements simply get tacked on to the end of the element, right? Now, for those of you who have some programming background, this a.b.c syntax should look familiar. Then that becomes the name attribute that gets assigned to the name attribute in the meta tag. And then you would fill in whatever value is appropriate for that refined element. Right? Whatever it was was created on such and such a date, it was modified on such and such a date, and it's valid from X date to Y date before it becomes obsolete. And there's your meta tags. The second way to qualify Dublin Core is to specify which encoding scheme, that is to say which controlled vocabulary you're using, and to do that we add a new attribute to the meta tag, the scheme attribute. And the scheme names the controlled vocabulary. In this case, I have a similar subject specified in two controlled vocabularies. We have the Library of Congress subject headings, and we have the medical subject headings. And those two schemes use similar but slightly different terms to describe the same thing, the back part of the eye. So given that you can have the same object specified in different ways, it's useful to have the, vo the controlled vocabulary specified so that you know what naming scheme you're working with. 